If you've ever been excited about a piece of furniture, thinking it's going to be a fun and easy, quick project, only to find that after some time trying to get working on it, you encounter so many problems, and you're Googling more than you're painting, and you're about ready to throw in the towel, I'm here to tell you I've been there, and I thought it'd be fun to take you guys along with me as I try and jump these hurdles and solve the problems that come at me on this project. I think whether you're a newbie or a seasoned pro, you'll enjoy this. So... This is a federal style. It's a really beautiful classic style. I really enjoy, but it has a lot of veneer on it. And so that has chipped over time and I'm gonna try to repair it with some Bonto. You guys know I love this sander and for $60 it's just such a great find. I'll make sure and link it in the description and you want to snag one if you don't have it already. It's such a good one. Uh, this veneer is so thin you know maybe the thickness of a dime if I'm lucky um, on the top and the little shelf there. The legs are solid wood but the rest of it that veneer is really tricky to sand and I have unfortunately I'm noticing as I'm going that I've broken through the veneer a couple of spots and I've chipped the veneer even more than it already was by sanding. I'm probably going to have to do a few more coats of Bondo to fix all the stuff that I messed up. This is pretty smooth right here and then see that's what I mean I, I chipped it while I was sanding it and then you can see the grain and the wood is really heavy actually it's showing up quite a bit now that I've sanded it and a lot of furniture finishers may choose at that point to fill the grain in I'm not going to I'm already so deep into this project and I feel like it's a vintage piece and that wood grain showing is actually just going to add more character to it so it's definitely not going to get me any more money to fill that in it'll just make it look more like it's not solid wood you know so that's what I'm going to do personal choice as always.
I feel like there are two types of furniture refinishers. There are the ones that use a shellac based primer on every project and just assume bleed through is going to be an issue and they do this as a preventative measure. It also acts as a great adhesion booster and so many more things you know it's just a, it's a really great product and you can't go wrong using it on every project that's for sure i'm a little bit more likely to switch things up i like to have variety in my projects and especially on the youtube videos i like to show a lot of variety in the ways that you can approach a project and stuff so i do a little bit of both right on this one i knew that the federal style was going to bleed through on me because i've done federal styles a lot like i said they're one of my they may actually be my favorite style. Uh, yeah, they are. They're my favorite style. And so I've done a whole lot of these, uh, like the double bow front federal styles. We did so many of those back in the day. Um, they sell really well for us. Uh, but anyway, the, they bleed through like crazy though because of the mahogany. And so they're just always an issue. And another thing that you can do if you don't want to prime all the whole thing like I'm doing here is you can keep a can of shellac handy and actually every furniture refinisher that I know has a can of shellac in their garage and in their workspace and they keep it handy for when bleed through pops up. Sometimes it's unexpected, sometimes you're expecting it and either way you can just spray that shellac on there and then just keep on painting. paint this black. Here's one of my favorite black paints and it's a little trickier to use and I'll get into some of the ways that I've worked around that but the color of it is so beautiful. It's this really true black but soft and it's just I haven't found another color that really gives me the same uh, feeling. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. But a lot of people struggle with milk paints and I struggled with milk paints and chalk paints with streakiness. And that's how a lot of you guys found my channel is because I was trying to you know, figure that out. And there really wasn't a lot of good information on the internet at the time <laughs> because it's really hard to do actually. So, you know, I'm just being real with you. That's why I switched over to oil enriched enamels. And if you continue to struggle with streakiness in your paints, especially darks, then, you know, watch some of my videos where I use the oil enriched enamel. But if you're up for a little bit of a challenge here with the uh, milk paint, there's a lot of benefits to doing it this way too. So, Using the milk paint, it, it, it has great adhesion. It doesn't um, chip e easily. It's a really great furniture paint, and that's why they've done so well, General Finishes, with uh, marketing to people who are using this for furniture. It's just a really, really strong and durable paint that adheres really, really well, and it doesn't need a primer. And so I used a primer because I had bleed through issues on this project, but definitely I didn't need it for the adhesion. I like to do a roller, and then what will happen is it'll bubble up on me a ton. I'll have bubbles. It looks like bubble wrap almost. <laughs> and then I'll just wait 60 seconds, and then I'll roll over it again with the dry foam roller, and that'll pop all my bubbles. And so... 
you can just roll and roll and roll and roll and roll. In my opinion, that is what I do personally. Other people will tell you other things, but I like to roll, 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 pop all the bubbles, get a nice smooth finish, even out the paint. If you wanted a, an even quicker project though, you could just get a good quality brush from Zebra for you know fine finishes and just paint it on with a paintbrush and it's probably gonna look 99% as good. It's personal preference. On the third coat of paint, my true love gave to me polyurethane. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, we should all unsubscribe after that. Uh, but seriously, we are going to do half and half. Half water-based, water-based polyurethane, and half the general finishes milk paint. And that is what I have found keeps it from you know, getting that streakiness and getting smudge marks. It just gives it your finish just enough sheen to where you can put your fingers on it and it won't leave any marks behind. This also can be the barrier between an actual clear coat. If you want to go full on with like a nice thick water-based polyurethane clear coat, um, over top so if you let this dry like 24 hours and then go over top of it with just plain water-based polyurethane you'll have even more durability and you might want to do that for the top of this since it's a side table or maybe it'll end up being a nightstand and people may put drinks on it if you're going to do this for a table like a kitchen table or something i would recommend an oil based polyurethane they are very different and the oil based is more durable but it does yellow over time we're going to apply this the same way just brushing it on and then using the roller and then if there's a lot of bubbles like this it looks like static on my screen you can just wait a second and then go over it again with the roller
All right, let's look at the before. Oh, look how happy I was. I had no idea. <laughs> and here's the after. Oh, it just gets me every time. I don't know. It'll, I don't think it'll ever get old. Damaged veneer. Oh, now look at it. Ooh, I am so proud. I think this is a really cool one. It's so classic, right? Should I add a little bit of um, like glaze to the handle? Is it too bright a gold? I wanted to show you guys the texture up close, you know? Got to give you that real life, but whew, it's looking slick. It is looking slick. I'm still going to be on the lookout for a match for this thing. I'm going to like send it out into the universe and will it into existence maybe we could start a group guys where you guys have matching nightstand i have a matching nightstand we can switch i'll see you in the next video bye